Hey everybody, Fisherman here. Welcome to another video. As I mentioned on Sunday, I want to do a comparison between methods of feeding your fry. Uh, one is hatching barb and shrimp, which is what's happening here. And the other is live food culturing, which I have showed you on the channel uh, many times. And uh, they both have pros and they both have cons. I'm not going to go into the actual methods for culturing each of them at the moment. If you are interested in that, uh, definitely leave a comment below and let me know, and I will put in a video that you know shows how to hatch brine shrimp, uh, which I'm sure there's been 500 million videos so far, and uh, also how I culture my live food. Now, one of the things I want to do before I get into this is I do plan on upgrading my hatching method for the brine shrimp, uh, mostly just to get a little bit more of a hat, better hatch rate and also to ensure uh, a more even amount uh, as time goes through. Uh, right now what I do is uh, every day to day and a half I clean one out, set it up fresh. The one on the right is the one that's fresh now and the one on the left is the one that has uh, the culture that I actually uh, get the eggs out of, sort of the Nopoli out of. So pros for brine shrimp. You can get a ton of baby brine shrimp. Uh, that's the best thing about brine shrimp, besides their nutrition. Uh, they uh, can be hatched in rather extensive and large quantities. And I think that is probably one of the best things about them. They are a little large on the con side for some fry. Uh, some fry are born too small, like Daniels and that sort of thing. Some egg layers. Almost all the live bears are perfectly fine right off on brine shrimp, and it's great. It's good, good nutrition. One con you guys may not be aware of is when I first started doing this years and years ago, uh, there was a shortage of brine shrimp for a while, and that is a definite con for that. And, of course, you have to spend the money to uh, well buy the eggs, uh, which can be a bit expensive, and the salt, and, of course, setting all that stuff up. So we're going to get on to, just for a moment, on to uh, live food culture. I'm just showing you this because these guys are getting big. I have to go and put them back in the pond. Uh, my client does not uh, need any anymore at the moment, so I want to put them back um, before they get too large. So this is uh, an isolation culture. The big jars are the ones that I've been culturing these for quite some time. Uh, in these right now, are a mix of Cyclopses and Paramecia, and I want to get a pure Paramecium culture going this year, which is the reason for this. If you look very closely, you'll see a little bit of a swirling cloud, uh, kind of about one third up from the bottom of that uh, tube, and that is the Paramecia. So I'm going to keep subculturing that until I get a pure culture, and the reason for that is, uh, as you can see here, that currently what I have is a number of different varieties. I want the one, I'll show you what it comes by, a uh, very specific uh, variety. Uh, I'm hoping, to, there it is. I'm hoping to get um, even larger uh, Paramecia. These are quite small. I mean, a brine shrimp, uh, by comparison, newly hatched, would take up more than two thirds of the screen at this current magnification. So you see, this is small food. It's great for the uh, newly hatched small fry and I find uh, paramecia are an excellent culture uh, to do they're not hard uh, the problem with live food culturing and the reason why I have been getting into a bit more brine shrimp culturing lately is the quantity raising sufficient amounts I currently use uh, the paramecia cultures and the, and the uh, Cyclops cultures for the very small fry, like when I'm breeding the Danios and some other egg layers, I like to have that available so that uh, their first uh, three days to a week, uh, they feed on this. Uh, and it is, like I said, this is something you can just pour straight into wherever the fish are. It, like I said, very easy to culture. It is the downside, of course, the con is getting enough. And I've never actually managed to uh, be able to you know, get enough of this going that I can uh, raise a large number of different species at the same time. But if I'm going to breed angels, uh, which I'm going to be doing shortly, hopefully, uh, I definitely need this for the first few days, and they can feed off this quite well, and they do really well on it. And then, of course, I'll switch over to brine shrimp, because, again, I just don't get enough of this. And that is one of the things I have to be, uh, you know, aware of when I breed, is make sure I have enough food on hand for all the... Uh, well, all the various things that I'm raising. 
and that's uh, about it basically uh, brine shrimp's great uh, great nutrition uh, lots of protein all the stuff that you need for your fry they give me raised in uh, quite large quantities it doesn't take much in the way of setup you need air pump salt uh, brine shrimp eggs of course you have to buy the eggs which is a bit of a downside and of course they are a bit large for uh, some of your fry uh, mostly the egg layer ones of course and the live food cultures are again even cheaper you just need some containers uh, you have to set them up you use straw which is what i do hay and uh, you can uh, culture them quite easily they're great for the tiny fry the problem with them is raising enough of them so i hope this uh, helps you guys in your plans i do both because i have the room and i want to get as much variety from my fish as possible if you are limited in space uh, i guess you would have to figure which one's best for you so anyway thank you for watching leave comments let me know what you think let me know if i missed anything because it's difficult when i do these off the top of my head to make sure i have covered everything and i will see you in the next video bye for now